Continuing on with the Land Rover Series 2A Suffix B rebuild, I'm just going to focus now on sundry bits and pieces, one might call it. Starting to clean things up and service them. So the next thing I will look at is obviously these props. Um, one of the things that um, I need to be careful here is that before I start going off and spending time cleaning these, etc., etc., one of the things I'm going to do first is actually check for um, spline wear, make sure that I can reuse them, because if I can't, if there's too much slop in there, I'll have to just turf them and get new ones. If the unit is okay, then I'll um, look at the universals on each side. Now, UJs, um, they're not that expensive. I've just had a bit of a, a feel for them, and they actually feel okay. Yeah, well, anyway, for the for the reprop, anyway, they feel okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to pull it apart first, and this one here, actually they're both, if you look at both of these, you'll notice that the yoke is in alignment with each other, which apparently is the uh, correct way of, of having them. The only thing I need to do is to make sure that the face is the correct side. So, for example, here is the nipple here. I know that if I have that one facing up, I need to have this side or this one facing the same direction. So what I've done here is I've made a couple of little marks there. Um, however, I was trying to see whether or not there was any location arrows <clears throat> on these, and I don't know if they exist for this model, but I'll give it a bit of a clean up around here anyway, as I need to remove that collar there, and we'll go from there. And I'll show you the, I'll show you the splines and all that kind of stuff as we go through. Okay, so cleaned it up a bit, put a bit of my favourite lubricant in there, see if I can, that's it, undo that, right, so the actual movement of this shaft is really, really good, really happy with it, there is a bit of play side to side, but aside from that, it's very smooth. And they look pretty good. If anything, the only thing that I, I could say is that it's probably got very, very little grease in there. I was expecting a lot more, but Never mind, it looks okay. So I got that a bit more clean. Not perfect, but I'll give it a bit a, a huge clean just before reassembly. The main thing was to make sure that the splines look in good condition, which they do. So I'm happy with that. The next thing I've got to do is try to remove the little rubber seal in here, uh, which needs to be replaced. All full of crap in there. So we have this kind of retaining washer, obviously the, the cap, <clears throat> and that was the remains of the the internal seal that sat on here above this washer. So I need to order one of those. So the next step, as I said, is to start pulling this universal apart. I'm going to take the grease nipple out first. Once I've taken those out I'll take each of these circlips out, the retainers. As you can see I've already started putting a bit of um, diesel and clean, trying to clean the muck out of there, out of the, um, the ears. And I'll also take this one out as well. I'm pretty much taking this nipple out just so that it's out of the way when I'm trying to pull the entire unit apart. I can. This is a bit of the frustrating part. Here we go. Actually quite a bit of a clever design in my opinion. Much easier these style than the ones with the eyelets in them. Right. 
Right. So these are all out now. Now I've got to find the, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the socket trick. So I'm going to find a socket that can sit outside here on the ears to receive the, the inner cap. And I need another socket on the opposite side that actually sits inside this cap so I can hammer it out. You can see how it's moving in and you can see how that's now becoming flush. So this is where it gets important that I make sure that this isn't interfering. Slowly but surely coming out. So I'll continue with that. You can see that's that's big enough to allow that to to flow through. Okay, what I'll try to do now is see whether I can budge that with a set of pliers. Bring out the big guns. If this can budge at all. There we go. Oopsie. Okay. Actually looks in pretty good condition too, which is not surprising. It felt good. Felt smooth when I was moving it. Some of the needles and the needles that got stuck in there. So I need to remove all those. Okay, so now that we've got that end out, I should then be able to tap that back through and start popping that end out. Actually, I'll show you this one in detail. Why not? Again, it's just a matter of loosening that up. Same thing. Needles came out. So we've got now a loose thing, thing and we can just pop that out like that. Um, it also means that the condition of the ears look to be um, very good as well. There's no marks on that. So happy with that. So now I'll get on to removing this side. <coughs> Again taking these out. It's not too bad actually this this side. I mean obviously when I'm hammering when you're punching that through it's going to do damage to the seal. Um, but again all the all the surfaces are fine. So it's it's good to know that, that actually wasn't in bad condition. Right, so again the ears look to be in, in good condition. So now I can take all these and clean them up. Just a bit of a thing here. I, I decided to go with another socket because the other one was actually falling off the edge. It was slightly too big. Whilst this one here fits nicely on the ears and also allows for room for the, the cap to actually fall out. So I'll be using that one instead. This one here came out with all the needle rollers still in place. So generally that's what you see. And there's the inner cap. Now with this particular one, obviously it's been damaged because of the thing, but it actually feels very soft. All right, shall we have a look at the condition of the other prop? So just undoing this again. There we go. Oh, that is perfect. I mean, in terms of play. Really happy. That's actually in better condition than the, than the rear. 
Rightio, so here we have it. The props have now been stripped of their universals. Next step now is to thoroughly clean the lot. So one last thing, I've just, as you can see, it's all wet. I just sprayed diesel all over it, pretty much, uh, using my favourite degreaser. And I'll just let that sit for a while. I'll grab a cup of coffee and then I'll come back and start the cleaning process. So I just gave it the high pressure wash beforehand to remove as much crud as possible. And what I've done with this one here, as you can see, is I've used the tools that I've got and just carefully um, taken away as much of the uh, rust and crud as possible. Of course, after this, I'll be putting a rust converter on there so I can start coating it. And um, yeah, so really happy again with the splines. They're very good. Happy with the condition of the, of the ears. So everything's kind of looking pretty good. Some uh, markings here. And you can see the difference between the cleaned item and the the one that I haven't as yet sanded back. Both have now been stripped as you can see here. Now I did find, you can see what looks to be like an arrow on this side, but there's no corresponding arrow on this side at all. I tried and tried to look for something right through it and nothing. So I know that sitting it up like that it's sitting true. On this one here we do have the arrow here and we do have the remnants of an arrow there. So again it's sitting on the right plane here. So I'm just going to leave that like it is because that's how I pulled it out. And so now what I'm going to do is give it a good clean with a brake cleaner just to get rid of any further residue and then I've got to get myself some paint so um, I can uh, start putting this together and and uh, having it all dry and ready for the uh, new unis that I'll put on order soon. So I'm just going to go right through again and clean out all these circlip grooves because even though I used a high pressure hose it still wasn't enough to uh, <clears throat> remove it, would you believe it? So, but interestingly, some some different designs here. You can see that there's a almost like a breather hose here. Oh, sorry, hole. So this hole is uh, straight into this chamber. So what I suspect happens is when you put grease in, it's um, pumping grease in, and obviously air's got to escape from somewhere. So it does so from here. But on this side, there is no such hole. So I'm not sure how and where the grease goes to. Presumably, it just gets pushed back and then it just um, bypasses the seal or something or whether or not you have to actually take the collar off when you're putting some more grease in there to allow for the air to escape I'm, I'm not sure but interesting how there's two two different designs for that <laughs> 